What's the YouTube, NCG here, bringing you an updated DDD deck profile. Now, obviously this deck has taken a little hit because the Lynx, it's not able to flood the board as much, but what you need to remember is they are very, very good at reviving from the grave, especially their extra dead monsters from the grave that you use to then sync up or fusion up. So it's very important to focus around that a bit more. Without further ado, let's crack straight into the deck profile and we'll take you through it. So we run Triple DDD, Oblivion King, Abyss, Ragnarok. This is very, very important as this is one of your uh, one of your few main deck cards that can revive any DDD from the graveyard. This means it can revive any of your XYZs, your fusions, your synchros, absolutely anything. You can even revive yourself the new boss card, DDD, Gust High King Alexander. He, he is that important. Triple DD Lamia, this obviously gets you into your synchro plays. Uh, triple Necro Slime and Triple Swell Slime. Now, in the old days where you bef before Link, where you could go Swell Slime, get a fusion out, and then Necro Slime, get a fusion out. Unfortunately, you can't do that now, but it does give you the safety net that if your opponent nukes your board, you do have Necro Slime's effect, or if your extra monster zone is free, you have Necro Slime's effect to push you forward. Triple DD Savant Kepler. This obviously searches you out your contracts, um, all the way from the traps to any other spells as well. I play double Savant Thomas and a single DDD Doom King Armageddon. Now Savant Thomas helps get you from your extra deck, like popping out, um, popping your scales to then special summon your scale, uh, the same monster from your extra deck. So this helps get you like a Kepler onto the board and stuff like that. Um, and that can help extend your plays massively. Um, what you also need to remember as well is he is a double D, not a triple D. So it can obviously hinder some of your plays if not done correctly. Uh, next up, obviously, we play a one Doom King arm again. This is purely for the beta ability coming from the main deck. Um, he can be incredibly strong and incredibly helpful for you. Um, so it's just entirely up to you if you choose to play him. Otherwise, play Triple Thomas. Uh, now we move on to Double Savant Copernicus. This obviously is your foolish barrel of the deck. This can help extend your plays um, by getting like Swell Slime. You've got to remember, you have very big beaters in your deck anyway. But Copernicus can help get you a Necro Slime to Grave, a um, Lamia to Grave, or even a Swell Slime to Grave to be banished to bring out a big beer. So that's kind of how the deck can roll now. Uh, and then we wrap it up with a one Max C on the monsters because it is still one of the most powerful hand traps around. Next up, we play a Triple Dark Contract with the Gate. This is your searcher of the deck. Very, very important. Uh, triple Laura Darnes, all your monsters are dark, and it's not the end of the world if you do go into the Banish Zone. Now, so I play Double Pot of Desires. This will be easier to get hold of when the tins are released. Uh, double Trading. We have six targets for our trading, level 8 trading. Um, so you can use it for draw power. And in the graveyard, your DDD monsters aren't always dead. Single Dark Coal. Single Soul Charge, because it's very, very important in Link. One Dark Contract with a Swamp King. This is your Fusion card. Uh, one One for One to get your Lamias and your Keplers to board. A foolish burial and a burial from a different dimension. I think this is an amazing top deck that can change the entire game. You top deck this, you can bring back your necro slime, you can bring back your swell slimes, you can bring out a beta from hand, and you can also bring out a beta from the extra deck, which could win. So that's it for the spells. Now onto the traps. We play the one Sword of Warning, the one Dark Contract with Witch, and I like to play the one Torrential Tribute because this deck can start from scratch a couple of times. Um, as long as you play it at the right time, Torrential Tribute can actually be very, very important and catch your opponent way off guard. Now onto the extra deck, we play one of the new DDD Wave High King Caesar, he's a very very nice negator. So two level 16 touch, yes it does require both your Genghises, but then because you can revive them it's not the end of the world. Plus the fact that he's a 28B and his effect reads as thus, when a spell, trap or monster effect is activated that includes an effect that special summons a monster, quick effect, you can detach one material from this card and negate the activation if you do destroy that card. Then you can make one other DD monster you control and this card gains, uh, sorry, um, negate, the, uh, negate the activation if you do destroy that card then you can make one other DD monster you control and this card gain 1800 attack until the end of this turn if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard you add one dark contract from your deck to your hand so he's a searcher, he's a booster and he's just a negator so he's really really cool it's a shame we haven't got the new high flame king but that hopefully should come to us very soon Played one uh, DDD Jury King Kali Yuga, still very, very good, very, very strong. 3500 beta, nukes the board, searches absolutely everything. Um, DDD Super Doom King Dark Armageddon, you don't have to play this guy. It's between this guy and um, Scarlet Red Dragon Archery for me, so that's down to uh, your choice. Number 38, Hope Harbinger, one of the best rank 8s in the game. Double DD Flame King Genghis, you can play this at 3 if you wish, if you want to focus on having him uh, wave High King Caesar and. Obviously more, but he does 
you, you don't want to take out the, the extra deck is really really tight as it is. Uh, the DD Oracle King Diarc, DDD Dragon Bane King Beowulf, Supreme King Dragon Star and Venom is very very powerful. So if you put in a um, Uh, you tribute the above, so you don't need to worry about a poly, so he's still very, very strong. Um, then we go with an Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon, a DDD Gust King Alexander, DDD Curse King Siegfried, um, Cyphering Lord Omega, best level 8 at the moment in Lynx because it can bounce out and then come back. Builds the Diabolical Dragons because he's a nice card to sit on against Dracos. And then the DDD Gust High King Alexander, he's incredibly strong, quite easily made in the DDD deck. Um, and still very, very important. Now, there is one thing I want to mention with the DDDs, is to make them more consistent, if you wish, you could put in three Gofus, um, two Link Spiders, and a Deco Talker. Now, this obviously helps extend your board a little bit as well. However, by doing so, sometimes your Gofus can become dead. Um, I'm trying to look into ways of using decks without Gofu, because if they do get hit on the ban list, um, then you're going to be going back to square one, whereas this deck can pretty much run under the current ban list, and hopefully a future ban list as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Until next time, guys, see ya.